everyone we are back my name is liz cross psychic medium you can find me at psychiclizcross.com or on the patreon at remote viewing and beyond we are here with mr robot and mr robot frequently takes requests from the patreon subscribers and what do you have today for us mr robot yeah so in general, I want to do uh, kind of like a health and disease type episode. Um, there's a ton of people, and I think this will have to be like a 10-part series of, you know, maybe we can have a health section on your Discord or something. Mm -hmm. But this lady right here, you can see my screen, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. So this is Miss Budwig. Um, let's see if you can get a connection to her. I, I have her here. I Great. do. She looks exactly the same as that photograph. <laughs> um, well, on that note of looking like this image, ask her if she, uh, has she reincarnated yet? Cause she has deceased in 2003. Is she, is this her astral form or is she still passed away? Still yes, yeah, she's still in the spirit world. Have you been no, she hasn't reincarnated. And does she have any interest in reincarnating? Do you have any interest in reincarnating? Yes, she loves being here on the earth plane. Interesting. Cool. So, um, kind of wanted to start with cancer in general, and she came up with this concept and she named it or coined it kind of like by her last name it's it's called the budwig protocol i have yeah. never heard of that <laughs> yeah it's just like health nuts and people who are facing cancer would know about it um the whole concept is is basically just low fat cottage cheese um blended with flax seed oil um and you'd want like a nice high quality flax seed oil that you can get like at whole foods and mm -hmm. you blend the two together at a certain ratio you'd have to read about it um it's basically a two to one ratio but can you ask her now that she's in spirit if her recipe actually reversed things like cancer did your recipe actually reverse things like cancer it helped but it didn't reverse it what do you mean it helped it helped along with the conventional treatments okay and this so it's basically kind of like a, a smoothie um does she think that this smoothie um can dissolve tumors do you think that this maybe can dissolve tumors? Yes, it can help shrink them. Okay. And does she think everyone should drink this, you know, on a regular basis for health reasons? Do you think that everyone should drink this on a regular basis for health reasons? No, only those that are suffering with the early effects of cancer. So what exactly is in the smoothie? Yeah, so what's interesting is it's just cottage cheese and flaxseed oil um, and uh, maybe a little bit of water. But what you're doing is the, the cottage cheese, um, the, yeah, the sulfur binds and makes, makes the, the flaxseed oils. There's something in the oil that she basically came up with. She figured out that it, it put like you, your blood into like a, I think it's like a positive ionic state or something. It's just about getting more ions into your, I don't know, your stomach or your blood. Can you ask her if that's what it was all about? Yeah. 
Yes, and it's for the stomach. Okay. Yeah, so the idea is that when you have when you have this any kind of really severe, I mean it's it seems like it's geared towards cancer, you have this negative uh I honestly think it's like an ionic state of your blood. I I haven't read about this in a very long time, but I'm very familiar with this diet because I've tried it a lot because it's very tasty. Um, but it helps. Uh, according to her studies, she was a biochemist and, you know, she, she didn't just come out with this out of nowhere. She wrote a book about it. Um, does she know if, if it actually saved anyone's life? Well, she, at any time, this, this protocol. No, it would help. Oh, I think we were not asking the right question there because ultimately everybody dies. Right. Right. Okay. Did it, or did it put anybody's cancer into remission? Yes. That's awesome. Um, and there's a few other protocols that I'm not exactly familiar with the names of, but I am familiar with their uh protocols can you ask her um if drinking a lot of carrot juice can also help with cancer it has to be fresh mm -hmm. um, drinking a lot of carrot juice helps to you know stave off cancer yes yeah so this guy wrote a book I, he turned orange with how much carriage <laughs> but he you know went to remission he had uh i think lymphoma or something um so i mean it's worked for, for some people and can you ask her if there is a a compound in urine that can be used to kill cancer cells is there a compound in urine that can be used to kill cancer cells no yeah, and that might be too direct to the question because there's a there's like a scientific uh, procedure to convert it. There, there's a protocol in Mexico, and it's kind of hard to Google that. But um, let me ask her this question: What about the pH levels in the body? Is that important for cancer treatment? Very important. Okay, so if we have an acidic pH level, that's very dangerous, she said. And if we have a basic pH level, that's very good. Um, so what if we drank like a couple of tablespoons of baking soda in water every day? Would that help? Yes, that would help tremendously. Can you ask her if, if putting baking soda directly into a tumor with maybe like a needle would that dissolve the tumor or putting baking soda into the tumor would that directly dissolve the tumor no it has to be a digestive approach huh interesting what do you mean by it has to be a digestive approach because the tumor has to be surrounded by the by the what by the baking soda so injecting it within the tumor is only going to um is only going to to you know just kill that small portion and then it can remultiply mm -hmm. you have to basically cut the tumor off so she's saying that if we surrounded the tumor and like a baking soda um, bubble, almost as it were, and st that would starve the tumor. Can that would ask, starve it. Can you ask her if she's familiar with Tulio Simoncini's baking soda cancer studies? Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. So he would intravenously just pump 
high levels of baking soda into people's blood or just inject le- uh, baking soda into tumors. And he's an Italian doctor. Um, <laughs> I guess some people don't like him at all because, you know, they, there's some interesting stuff about him. But, uh, you know, you never know what happened. I mean, you know, the cancer industry, you know, it's people, people die when they uh, come out with these alternative treatments, you know, sometimes. But anyways, um, so can you ask, there's a whole protocol on drinking maple syrup and baking soda. Can you ask her if that protocol can help with cancer? Can that protocol of drinking maple syrup and baking soda help with No, you have to take out the maple, maple syrup. Interesting, because people assume that the cancer is striving to access sugars so they add maple syrup to try and trick the cancer cells into ingesting baking soda there's already natural sugars in the body Mm -hmm. you don't need to feed the cancer more okay interesting and um another thing that she might be knowledgeable on can you ask her if um B17, which is found in apricot kernels, can that cure cancer? And B17, which is found in apricot pits, cure cancer. It helps to isolate it, but does it kill it all the way? No. It can help with treatment. I actually know somebody that has cancer now, and they were trying to cure it with apricot pits and uh, it, it didn't work. Can you ask her if people are more likely to get sick from B17 than it helping? People are more likely to get sick from B17 than helping? No, it can help a great deal, but it has to be in moderation and it should be used as a preventative. Okay, cool. Does it damage the liver? It can damage the liver. So the reason I asked it like that is because I don't know if it's B17 itself, but I know apricot seeds. um, I don't know if it's digested in a certain way, but it can be, uh, I don't know if it's a precursor to um, a very poisonous material. I think it's, arsenic or something <laughs> yes that's correct yes yeah uh can you ask her if people you know is it just the fact that you're taking something that resembles arsenic that is maybe killing the cancer or is it actually the b17 the combination of b17 and the arsenic cool that's awesome And can you ask her if there's any fruits or vegetables that she knows of now that she's in spirit that would work better than anything we've mentioned? Just as much vegetables and fruit Non GMO. Yeah. I mean, organic is even better, but it's not always possible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, 80%, your diet should be 80% fruit and vegetables. Raw. Raw is best because yeah. when you start cooking, you can't change the chemical compounds in the food. Okay. Well, that's excellent. Um, What about juice fasting? If people juice fasted to cure cancer, it would help clear the body out. Would it get rid of the cancer and shrink the tumors? It can help rid of small tumors. What about very large areas of cancer? No, you would need a combination of conventional medicine. Bummer. 
Yeah, a lot of people don't want to ask her what she thinks about chemo, chemotherapy. Uh, what do you think about uh, chemotherapy? Oh, she doesn't like it. Um, but do you think it's necessary? She's like, there's better options out there. Have they come up with a mainstream option? Ooh, no, but they will. A new cancer treatment will be out. Does she think that'll happen in the next maybe two or three years? Will that happen in the next two or three years? No, we're, it's going to go into 2030. Uh, okay. Will they be, will we just drop chemotherapy altogether? No, they'll still use chemotherapy and radiation. It'll take a while. Ask her if, if it's a good idea to use radiation or if it's, you know, I mean, I understand the concept of chemo, but what is, what is her perspective on using radiation for cancer? What is your perspective on using radiation for cancer? It's very effective. Because it kills everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. What is it, your perspective on uh, proton therapy? Mm, she's not so into proton therapy. What does she think about like energy healing for cancer? What do you think about energy healing for cancer? No. No dice. <laughs> no. It's a cool. A placebo, she says, it won't last long. It'll always come back. Hmm. The treatment has to be consistent and it has to be over a long period of time. Yeah. Well, the, the, the adage is basically, you know, it took you a long time to get cancer. It'll take you a long time to get rid of it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um i think that's enough for miss budwig i'm wondering if we could channel a chinese medicine doctor and have his perspective on uh cancer yes how do i pronounce that last name Do dr dang ta uh, i think it's just tay tao tay tao okay he's here awesome what is he doing right now in spirit Studying. Is he learning advanced levels of about healing? You learning advanced levels of healing? No, how to be a better person. Was he, he happy? He, he says he made a lot of mistakes in this lifetime. Interesting. And how how is he learning? What is what is he his learning material? Is he you know, is he accessing universal knowledge or is he kind of like reading books? Accessing knowledge. It's like a download from source. And what does he plan to do with that new knowledge? It's for his reincarnation. On that note, can you ask him if if people can descend in their reincarnations instead of ascend and they kind of get worse and worse? That is a fantastic question. Well done, Mr. Robot. I love that question. People descend. Over or can they only ascend? Why would they descend? Ooh, they can descend. Is it common? It's very rare. They do descend when there's so much spiritual darkness within the soul. And he's saying... If they become too dark, they just return to dust. Hmm. Or they just turn into dust. Ask him if darkness equates evil. 
If darkness what? I'm sorry. Does, does darkness mean evil? Does darkness mean evil? No. Ask him where darkness comes from. Where does darkness come from? The other side of the universe. Ask him if darkness cares about pulling us into it. Does darkness care about pulling us into it? That's its main goal. And would he say that darkness has the equivalent power as source energy or white light? Yes, but in a different form. Yeah, and I'm just kind of wondering because, you know, if, if they're equally, you know, magnetic and you kind of ping pong between the two and, you know, because... If the light was stronger, you would think everyone would be like always ascending. I don't know, but um, that's interesting because I find that the darkness moves faster than light. Yeah, I find that the darkness um, is more profound than light, as in we pay attention to more of the dark than we do the light. Because the dark, for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's really bad. You know, we have these bad experiences in our life, these bad events. Uh, we witness them. We're victims of it. We're perpetrators of it. It seems almost more powerful than the light. Why is it so difficult for humans to act in the light? And that's, he says, that's because. The darkness is always trying to pull them over. Hmm. Ask him if what he thinks about the Adam and Eve story with the snake introducing sin into people's lives. It, were people originally, or I should say, were like consciousnesses in the universe originally like free of darkness and then we were interested in like knowledge hmm. and we found darkness that was a wake-up call it was when our consciousness ascended to a higher level and therefore we had ethics and morality before that, we didn't have ethics and morality. We were just like animals, you know, mating and just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but what, what were we, was darkness around before that? Yes, darkness was around before that. And what, we just didn't see it. We didn't know it. But what about other religions um that were formed prior to that where was that a ethical and morality awakening for them too yes so religion is basically a, an ethical morality higher ascension of consciousness so we've shifted from survival to ethics mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, can you ask him if he knew we were going to channel him today? No, it was a complete surprise. <laughs> Is he okay with that? Are you okay with that? I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> oh. That's funny. That's really funny. I like these questions. <laughs> just trying to get into their head a bit since they're um, they're higher dimensional so there's a lot more facets to their thinking than uh, a common uh, three-dimensional being so so these little things are you know they they kind of clue into what life might be like when you're non-physical but uh, anyways um can you ask him what he thinks about 
traditional Chinese medicine now that he's had a whole life of it. It's complementary. Do he doesn't think it works better than Western medicine? Do you believe it works better than Western medicine? No. Interesting. Very. Um, why do you think Western medicine is better? Because Western medicine has, has moved forward. Chinese traditional medicine, he's saying... It's still going on the same principles that it's been going on for years. Whereas Western medicine is making lots and lots of discoveries, modifications. Um, it's becoming better all the time. Traditional Chinese medicine is not becoming better. It's staying flat. There's no real um, pioneers, as it were, mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, evolve the the traditional medicine. That makes sense. Can you ask him if Chinese medicine works better than Ayurvedic medicine? What is that, Ayurvedic? Yeah, Ayurvedic. What is that? Um, it's basically like Indian, like red dot Indian, uh, Eastern Indian medicine. Okay. So as in like India, not Native yeah. American. Okay. Um, do you believe that Chinese medicine is better than the Indian Ayurvedic medicine? They're about the same. So what's interesting is Ayurvedic is actually way older than Chinese medicine in there's some really interesting stuff if you were to read a book. Uh, a lot of people out there have... It, if you guys have any kind of weird symptoms that you've had a lot of doctors kind of pass you up on, I recommend pulling one of these books, an Ayurvedic or a Chinese medicine book. And you you uh, could identify with a certain type of symptom. Like for me, I identify with in Chinese medicine something called fire liver can you ask him how to reverse fire liver reverse fire liver water fast wow that's crazy what is fire liver mm. so on the scientific level it would be the belief that your liver is like inflamed but from the chinese medicine pers perspective it's that your everything is a balance between cool and heat like all your organs and uh the argument would be that i've ate too many spicy things and certain things uh have too much heat and people can fall on the other side of the spectrum where they have like uh their lungs are too cool and they might get an issue like pneumonia or something mm. um it's all based on like hot or cold on like the organs can you ask him if the hot and cold concept is really just another way to describe inflammation it's a uh, almost like a, it's a way to describe diagnosing a problem yeah so there's a problem there it may not necessarily be inflammation. It may be something else. It could be cancer. It could be some other type of virus or disease. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a way to, it's almost like it's an energy thing where they, they assess each organ and fill the temperature of the organ. Yeah. So they actually use this electric probe and they, they run electricity through each meridian and that's actually how i kind of found out about energy meridians can you ask him about how that works the uh energy meridians that they test for in in, in chinese medicine if they're uh, non-physical or are they actually physical things that they're testing okay sorry what what let's break that question down simply um what what are we asking 
So, uh, can you ask him if energy meridians that they that they can test are they physical or non physical? They're physical. The energy meridians. Mm-hmm. And why can't Western medicine find evidence of these meridians? Because it's not, it, it's not in line with their thinking. But it's about the energy flow. They need to test for energy flow, but they don't do that in Western yeah. medicine. Right. And that's that non-physical aspect that I'm trying to get at. I'm just wondering, because. Um, the energy flow is definitely there. Ask them how we can test for this energy flow. How can we test for the energy flow? Would it be like a Doppler? Almost like a Doppler. Almost a, he's showing me some sort of like Doppler. Um, you know, something that you put on and it goes do, 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 something like that almost. Is it a little needle that kind of goes left or right? No. Huh. It's something like, I don't know. It, it makes a sound when it picks up energy. Okay. So it's, it's something that we can physically measure our energy flows and blocks. Absolutely. Um, now, let me ask this question. Uh, somebody's come out recently with the fact that the most important meridian line is like the vagus nerve. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. I'm not sure if I asked that question correctly, but somebody did ask me that, some, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Can you ask him if, if our life force as human beings, is all of our life force kind of in our stomach area? Is all of our life force in our stomach area? Yes, the solar plexus. Ask him if the solar plexus is also referred to as the lower dantian. Solar plexus is also referred to as the lower dantian. Yes. So, yeah, in Chinese medicine, they kind of say your life force is right around this area. Like, you're... Like, they kind of put it kind of like as if it's like your soul energy, like your whole existence. Um, That's absolutely correct. Interesting. Um, let me have a look at that. Yeah, upper dantian. Is that where the soul energy is? No, that's where the consciousness is. So the conscious mind is up in the upper dantian. Uh -huh. The middle dantian, what is there? The middle dantian is the subconscious and the lower dantian. That's where the soul is. So you always have those three things. You've got the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the soul. And so on that note of having these three aspects, can you ask him if there's ever a time when a person, their consciousness is detached from their soul? Ooh. Is there ever a time when that person has the consciousness to detach from the soul? Yes, there's several occurrences. Um, your consciousness has to detach from your soul when you experience extremely traumatic events, especially when you're younger, when you have to experience extreme pain. Uh, that's how your soul memories become locked mm. and you can't access those memories with conscious thought because the conscious mind becomes detached. That is an excellent question. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so interesting to me because during the CTT, oftentimes 
it will bring about memories that you are completely uh, detached from. Like you, mm -hmm. they're there, they're in the cellular energy, they're in the cellular memory, but right. you don't remember them because you were detached for whatever reason. However, your energetic framework is built upon those soul memories, right? Mm -hmm. And upon that energy of those traumatic events. So oftentimes, you know, we do, we detach, we uh, lay down that foundation, and then it's really evident, those memories are evident, most specifically, when we enter into relationships with people. Mm -hmm. And whatever that energy is that's laid down within you, it attracts you know, that type of person to you. So if you end up in a very, you know, difficult relationship, if you end up with a narcissist, if you end up with an abuser, if you end up with, you know, an addiction and an addict or, or something like that, that's as a direct result of the events that you experience at a very young age, that energy attractor was laid down within you. And that's because you detached your consciousness. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things, you know, when people say that they commit a crime and they have no memory of that crime, that is wow. because you detach your consciousness. And so that on, that, is an on, excellent that, question. on that note, does he think body possession is possible by like negative entities? Oh, Lord, this is all what we we're talking about in the CTT today. Do oh, yeah. you think body possession is quite possible with negative entities. Very possible. And how do they come in? They need a host. And how do we prevent that from happening? How do we prevent that from happening? Ha! He said, just pray. Um, no, really. How, how do we prevent that from you? You possibly can't unless you know to ground and protect yourself and just be mindful of whatever it is you're you're tapping into. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving. Can you see my mouse oh. moving? Uh, no. OK, I'm looking at this one here to the left in the middle mm -hmm. and it has this outer energy ring here. Uh -huh. Um over to the left to the oh, yeah. left. there you go that is interesting to me as well because that's the biofield right mm -hmm. and the biofield is where we send and receive information so when there's a life lesson that's supposed to be had the soul the solar plexus will send out messages into the biofield and these magnetic attractors, and that will come back in, right? So wow. you're supposed to attract something good, like winning the lottery, right? No, we all want to do that. That lesson will be presented in the biofield, and it will attract it back in. Similarly, bad events as well. Can you ask him if, if we do have a certain color to our biofield, you know, called an aura? We do have a certain color to the biofield. The biofield is separate to the aura. Okay. And um, can you ask him to describe what his experience is while he was just uh, hanging out before we talked to him? Is he in an area that resembles you know, like the earth plane with trees and stuff, or is he like kind of floating in space or is he like in pure blackness? If you can get just a little description of kind of like where he's at right now, like what, what before he's. What do you see? I'm surrounded by love and light and friends and family. Do you see any like trees or nature? No. It's like we're just there. Is it black? No, it's like broad daylight. Ask him if there's any concept of space or time there. Is there any concept of 
concept of space or time there? No. So if he thinks of someone, do they kind of just manifest next to him? If you think of someone, do they just manifest next to you? Yes, that thinking of them sort of draws them in. Do we do the same here on plan on the planet? No. Can you explain synchronicity? Yes, synchronicity is a premonition. Interesting. Mm. I love synchronicity. It's like my favorite thing. I I basically do a dance every time I get one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a premonition. So can you ask him if synchronicity really has to do with the fact that our surroundings in the physical world are, you know, um, cause that idea of premonition, it's kind of like we're all these cogs in the machine. Cause to, to know what's going to happen next, you have to be a part of it. So like, you know, how, how does that happen? How does synchronicity happen? Oh, how does, how does synchronicity happen? It's almost like a deja vu, a meant to be. Um, it's all to do with energy. So when you're mentally thinking of somebody, you're sending that energy strand out to them and pulling them in. What about the number synchronicity when people start seeing numbers all in a row? Ooh. Oh, what about numbers when people see uh, numbers all in a row? That's a sign from spirit. Is it usually a sign that you're messing up or that you're doing something good? Is it usually a sign that you're messing up? No, it's a sign that they're watching. And they're listening. And it's almost like a, a round of applause for you. Because <laughs> I have some numbers that I feel like they're haunting me. And I, I don't know if they're positive. So that's pretty interesting to hear that. <laughs> Let's ask this. Is it based on numerology? Sometimes. Is it based on numerology all the time? No. So like today, 444 just mm -hmm. popped up and I keep getting that. I either get 1111 or 444. I have no idea what that means. Right. What it means I'm on the that? right path. He just said, it means you're on the right path. Congratulations. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Do all synchronous, all synchronous numbers mean you're kind of on the right path or should you try to dissect their differences? Yes, it means you're on the right path. Okay, so people shouldn't get caught up in like 111 being different than 444. Should people get caught up in 111 being different than 444? No, it all really has the same meaning. Awesome. That's a good question. You're asking a lot of excellent, excellent questions. Thank you. Trying. <laughs> um, can you ask him what he thinks about this picture right here, this Kundalini area, why does this area vibrate when people are in deep meditation? Because that's where they connect in meditation. To the uh, non-physical realm? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, Liz, you know, I've, I've had my Kundalini open up and uh, it's kind of like being a human and discovering that you have gills and you can all of a sudden swim underwater. It's, it's something that you've never felt before. So uh, that's why I always like to ask these non-physical entities their perspective on it. Because um, it's like a whole nother experience that isn't, uh, you know, I'm trying to say vibration, but it, uh, you know, your body isn't moving but you feel vibrations, like vibrations of energy, I guess. But um, ask him if that's a good thing, connecting to that level, to that depth. 
specific to connecting to that level. Not if you don't ground and protect yourself first. And so can you ask him if grounding matters? Yes, it's very important. Can you ask him if the concept, though, does it have to do with the earth? Because that's kind of what it seems like it's about. It has to do with your consciousness. So I'm trying to think of a new way to ground because almost everyone assumes it has to do with just the earth's core. Can you ask him if the earth's core has anything to do or the earth has anything to do with grounding in general? Yes, because it has a magnetic pull on your consciousness and you want to keep your consciousness safe and in your body. I know exactly what he's talking about. Because there's been many times where my consciousness is somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I let go of my consciousness all the time to do what I do. Um, and my consciousness can be floating. Now, the last thing you want to do is have your consciousness hijacked or not have your consciousness back. So you have to, um, you have to recall your consciousness in by grounding or at least by grounding first you keep your consciousness intact yes terrible things can happen if your consciousness is floating if you're not protected can you ask him if if our imagination you know our you know a lot of people when they're we're grounding we're most people are just doing it with your imagination, but ask him if that is as good as asking for, you know, source to do it or like a spirit guy to help ground you. Should we ask source? Yes, source can ground us, but we also need to manifest that verbalizing, you know, that thinking of ground and protect that sets the intention. Okay. So it's, so the intention is equally uh, has an equal weight to um, actually getting assistance from your non-physical friends. This intention, how important is intention? Extremely important. It's probably the most important aspect of connecting. So the reason I ask it in that way is because, you know, if you're deep thinking, you're wondering about this, you might say, you know, just because I say I'm protected, does that truly mean I'm protected? <laughs> just because I say I'm protected, does that truly mean I'm protected? No, it do, you're not protected if you don't uh, surround yourself in the ball of white light that comes from source. And that surrounding, uh, let's just call it the action of surrounding, is that something we're manifesting through the, our own intention? Is that something we're it's almost like that intention calls source down to assist and protect. Okay. It's a commitment to source. What does he think about source energy? It's beautiful. Does he enjoy the whole plot of existence? Existence. Yes, even though there's a lot of suffering, uh, overall, it's necessary. Ask him if he has any intention to ascend. Do you have any intention to ascend? Yes, that's his goal. That's what he hopes to do. And does he feel like there's a hierarchy amongst non-spiritual or uh, non-physical beings where some are a little bit higher? You know, is there like a hierarchy where kind of like a caste system where uh, he might not feel, you know, as is there perks <laughs> to being more ascended? Are there perks to being ascended? Absolutely. Um, is there a hierarchy? Yes, multiple high levels of hierarchy. Can you ask him if there's a barrier that he runs into that he wouldn't be able to get past this barrier unless he was at a higher level of uh, being? Is there a barrier that you run into 
to? Yes, all the time. And is it, is, can you not go higher because you run into this barrier? Yes, it's very protected, each ascension level. That's really interesting. Can you ask him his, what, what if he is familiar with the concept of an oversoul? Um, he doesn't necessarily believe in it. Okay. Um, what does that mean? Can we channel, um, I think you, you had more fun. We had a Trev. Oh, not him again. <laughs> yeah, Trev was this guy. Oh, God. And Eridif was this guy. I prefer Eridif to the lizard. Yeah, let's let's uh, chat with Eridif real quick. Okay. Let me know when you got him. I got, yeah. He is, uh, I guess he's had some lifetimes as a... Uh, Pleiadian, right? Was that? Can you ask him if that's correct? Lifetimes as a human, no lifetimes as a human. Have you had lifetimes as a Pleiadian? Yes, multiple. Interesting. Can you ask him what is an oversoul? Oh God, what is an oversoul? <laughs> it's where you're living many lifetimes simultaneously. Yeah. So the concept is kind of like there's this brain basically of data and we are just like these little legs or tentacles of these little spots of light. And we're all just sending all our information up to this grander soul. And that's kind of where the idea of like, we are living in, you know, multiple times and multiple people at the same time comes from, uh, can you ask him if, if health has anything to do with, providing the oversoul information. Does health have anything to do with providing the soul with information? Yes. The oversoul or just the soul? The oversoul. Oh, does health have anything to do with providing the oversoul information? No. Does the concept of oversoul actually exist? No. So the conscious mind construct. Can you ask him if we are currently experiencing, is our soul able to experience multiple lives at the same time? Is our soul able to experience multiple lives at the same time? No. And that's interesting. Only when you're in spirit can you see all of your timelines or all your lifetimes at the same time. Okay. That's where that concept comes from. But as far as like being bound by gravity here in a physical body, no. Can you ask him about the future? Does, does the future exist or does everything that's ever going to happen already exist? Does the future exist? Yes, everything's mapped out. And well, ask him if what we're experiencing is really just um, kind of like a movie strip where we're just seeing one frame at a time. That's a good way of putting it. Is that, that's what he said? Mm-hmm. Because I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, like, cause like a move, like a, a, like a movie reel has the whole movie printed on the film. And what you see is only what's cast on the screen, you know, at that second, each second at a time or 30 frames per second, usually. But, um, can you ask Eridif first off what he thinks about Bashar, the alien Bashar? I want to be human. He wants to be human? I want to be, yeah. I want to be. It's kind of like making fun of Bashar. I want to be human. 
does he think Bashar's information uh, is accurate? I think Bashar's information is accurate. Yes, to a point. So one thing I'm thinking of right now is Bashar said that uh, there's actually basically a frame rate of reality and it's like it, it's essentially like billions of frames a second kind of. I'm just wondering what Eridev thinks about that. No, it's just constant. So there's no steel. So Bashar explains reality as a bunch of completely like stationary moments that are all connected and your your consciousness is just flowing through them what does Eridev think about that no it has to move with the consciousness and can you ask him if reality is an illusion Ooh, it's reality yes really it is yes because what, what we think is reality is not even close and where does the illusion come from source interesting so um, why would source do that to us? Because it wants to control. Is it opt is it acting to, you know, optimally for us? Yes, it loves us. Ask Eric if, if he has any intention of ascending to the next level. Do you have any intention of ascending to the next level? I feel like Eridiv's already at the highest level. Ask him if he wants to re-merge with source energy. Do you want to re-merge with source energy? Eridiv didn't come from source. Where'd he come from? <laughs> the dark. But he's an, so he's an ascended dark. So does that mean he's already back to the light? Ooh, it does, it's sending dark. Does that mean you're already back to the light? Yes. That is an amazing question, right? That's awesome. So just because, let me think about this. Um, so just because you're, you're doing deeds for the dark, but you're doing them out of love for the other souls, therefore... Because that soul intention is there, you can ascend back into the light. And the dark, you want to break free of the dark. So hmm. he climbed He climbed his way out. Did you climb your way out? Yes. And what's his perspective on the dark? What's your perspective on the dark? Stay away from it. It's harmful. Does he it say can your soul? It can destroy your soul. Ask him if his coming into existence was like the yin and yang, uh, you know, because there's, you know, why would uh, darkness create something? And the only reason I would think of is that it manifested at the same time to balance the positive. Did he form as like the yin to the yang? We're part of it, yes. Why do we need that balance? To learn. When you were born, even though you were born out of the dark, do you have elements of light within you? Yes. So you, we all have the elements within us of light and dark. Yeah. Could you ask him if humans in general have more light than dark? The humans in general have more light than dark. Yes, exponentially so. And what's his view on current day aliens? Are they, do they have any light in them? What's your view on current day aliens? Do they have light in them? No. 
And what was his experience as a Palladian? Was it much more advanced technology than currently on Earth? What was your experience as a Palladian? It's more advanced technology. More so than Earth. Absolutely. It's being able to have freedom of consciousness. Can you ask him if governments existed in on like an alien planet like that he was in? What, how, how are people governed? There's a hierarchy. And was that, was life, is that the, the natural trajectory of life where, uh, you know, uh, like a planet evolves into like a peaceful place? Yes. Can you that's ask him? The, that's the ultimate goal. Interesting. Peace. Yeah, peace. Can you ask him if there's any alien bases on Earth right now? No. Or under the sea? Or under the sea. Yes. Yeah, so there's footage of UFOs, UFOs, they enter the water and, and they, uh, they have a special force field where the water doesn't interact with it. So they can go, uh, you know, mock whatever underwater as well, which is pretty wow. cool. Um, can you ask him if there's any alliance with aliens and in, in like human governments that we don't know about? No. Does he think that human governments are scared of aliens? Very scared. Because they do is what they please. Can, can you ask him if there's any alien base on the backside of the moon? Yes. And is there a like a crashed, a, a very huge crashed UFO on the back side of the moon? There was at one time, yes. And was one of the NASA excursions purpose to go and view that crashed UFO? Several excursions. Can you ask him if the moon is hollow? Is the moon hollow? Yes. If, is there, so yeah, the, the, uh, it's full of energy though. The government detonated a nuke on the moon to see why it was vibrating because it was ring, it would ring like a bell and that would only happen if it was hollow. Um, can you ask me if there's like entities inside of the moon? No, just energy. And um, so as a little bit of an aside, I forgot which 17, I don't know which number it is, but it's the number, it's the highest number plus one because it was like the secret mission. So I forgot what that is. I don't know if it's 20. I'm trying to figure it out. Let's see. But can you ask him if the, Ooh, I have a great question for him. Let me see something. There's footage on YouTube and it's claimed to be footage like stolen from NASA of like the last, or can you ask him if there's footage that has been leaked of alien artifacts on the moon uh, on the internet? Is there footage on the internet that was leaked with alien artifacts? Several. Yeah, there's a really good clip. I was really hoping I could find it in time. Did Apollo 12 come across that crash? The Apollo 12 witnessed some sort of event mm -hmm. on 
the moon and what sort of event did it witness? It witnessed a war. Yeah, there's... Can you ask him about the big face on the moon that everyone knows about? If that's actually... Did it used to really big be a big face? Or is it just a natural formation? It's natural. Okay. Yeah. There's a really interesting clip, and it's super hard to find. Um, <laughs> I wish I could find it very quickly for you. It, this stuff is like scrubbed from the internet every once in a while. But yeah, anyways, can you ask me if there's an alien base in Colorado? Is there an alien base in Colorado? No. Interesting. There's some weird footage of uh, UFOs going in and out of Colorado at high speed. What's the yeah. deal with Colorado? What's the, what's the uh, pull to, to Colorado? It's the magnetic pull. Hmm. Do you use magnets? Yes, they use magnets to fly. Um. Was there a alien base under Los Alamos, New Mexico? No. Interesting. This other guy says there was one. Uh, he's like an ex-CIA guy. But they might have left. Because they were... Los Alamos labs, they were drilling down to do experiments to, to observe this alien uh, inhabitants and they like caused a cave in and then the aliens like attacked them and there was like a mini war, supposedly. Did that happen? No. Interesting. And can you ask if, if uh, Eridif has any reason to lie to us? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why would you lie to us? To convince you I'm like a human. Tell him we don't care if he's human. We actually prefer that he's ascended. We actually prefer that you're ascended. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this footage seems to have been erased from the internet. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Can you, well, can you ask them if there the footage was basically like really pretty castle type structures? Can you ask them if if there's any castle looking like structures on the moon of Earth Earth's moon? No. Or did they maybe get destroyed? Did they get destroyed? Yes. A long time ago. Um, I feel like humans destroyed them. Yeah, makes sense. Our telescopes keep getting better and better, and they obviously don't want us to know much about it. Can you ask them if there's any alien life on Mars? No, we've all left. So there's pictures of glass tube-like structures on Mars. Can you ask him if those glass tube-like structures um, indicate that a lot of the life was under the surface? It was on top and underneath. Whoa, that's weird. Can you live on top of That's Mars? really weird. Yes, they can live on Mars. Hmm. <laughs> so Google isn't working, and it always works now that we're talking to an alien. Isn't that weird? <laughs> like, server error. How do, why would that happen? Wow. Can you ask him if, uh, if stuff like this is monitored and, like, Stopped by, you know, agencies. 
all the time is it stopped by agencies. Usually it's stopped too late. Oh, look at oh that. my God, look at that. It's down. Can you ask him if this is due to us talking about things that they don't want people to know about? It's very possible. Yeah, that's never happened to me in my life. Oh, my God. Now I'm going to have to check my Google. Because I'm connected to you, and this is still streaming, you know, so internet is fine. So that's pretty interesting. Um, okay, one last thing for Eridif. I know we got off track of... Actually, I guess we'll have to do two things since we're still talking about health a little bit, but one more alien question. Can you ask him what's to do with implants, alien implants? What's to do with alien implants? They're real. But why do some people have them? Why do some people have them? Because they're necessary. What do you mean by they're necessary? We need them to monitor. Can you ask him if humans are just an alien experiment? Are humans just an alien experiment? Yes. Why do you yeah. say that humans are just an alien experiment? It's almost like we're here for their entertainment. Yeah. I don't understand that. Can you ask him who had more impact on our evolution, if it was source energy or aliens? What had more impact on our evolution? Source energy or aliens? Source. And for our actual evolution, was it modified? Was our DNA modified by aliens? Was our DNA modified? No. And when they monitor our, our, uh, with, uh, you know, with probe stuff, are they, does it have to do with preserving their genetics, like their ability to recreate, procreate? Sometimes. Can you ask wow. if there's any human alien hybrid work being done or has been done? We cannot clone. What do you mean? We cannot clone humans. No, they cannot clone humans. So I've read some interesting stories about people who are, have been abducted. And one of the stories was essentially that this guy got put into a machine and the machine pulled his soul out of his body. And he seemed to think that they might've put his soul into a different body. Can you ask him if that's possible? No, you can't do that without permission from source. So do that permission. No. Do aliens have a direct line of communication with source energy? No. Hmm. Do the dark and light ever communicate? Yes. Do they negotiate? Does the dark and light negotiate? Yes, sometimes, yes. Does source energy care which one comes out on top? Does source energy care which one comes out on top? Yes, very much. Interesting. So source energy has a plan, you could say. Mm -hmm. Does source energy have a plan? Yes. And would, would he say that Dark energy has basically the opposite plan. Does dark energy have the opposite plan? It follows the same plan. See, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find out if it's like a, a, a tool 
for life lessons or if it's like competition for source? Is it a tool for life lessons or competition for source? It's a tool. Yeah. Does that mean the dark isn't all that bad overall? But you don't want to interact with it. Mm. Can source energy cancel out anything that dark does if it wanted to? Source energy cancel out anything dark does if it wanted to. No. So are they something somewhere... we can cancel out? Uh, so, yeah, so it's up to the experiencers. Yes. Interesting. Mm. And but, sometimes you can't cancel it. So what about the times when we can't cancel it out? That's when the, the, the death of the soul happens. As in, sorry, does that mean when we can't cancel it out, what happens? When we can't cancel out the dark energy, what happens? It's almost like a, a trauma to the soul. Does the soul energy get reused? Only if you can find it. Does source find it and use it again? Only if you ascend to that level. I know what they're talking about here. Okay. So, you know, I do a lot of CTT and... I always find that with the CTT, what happens is when you experience a traumatic event, you lose a piece of your soul puzzle on that timeline. Mm -hmm. When we do a CTT uh, session, we actually go back and we pick up our soul puzzle or we pick up a piece of our soul puzzle and we put it back. Okay. Can you ask him what happens when a new soul is born? Is it is it made from nothingness? What happens when a new soul is born? Is it made from nothingness? Yes, it's brand new. So how can uh, someone like us find out if we're an old soul or a new soul? How do we find out if we're an old soul or a new soul? You're not supposed to. Hmm. Google's still down? Yeah, I'm not having any luck with Google right now, but... Crazy. Um, Let me check it on my phone. Yeah, yours is probably working. That's crazy. Yeah, odd timing. Um... Uh, yeah, Google's working on my phone. Perfect. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> We've been shut down. Right. Um, uh, and lastly, what does he think about Treb, the other entity that's channeled through Rob? What do you think about Treb, the other entity that's channeled through Rob? Too much of a showman. Yeah, so for anyone who didn't catch the last video, Trevor was jumping around in Liz's face, apparently. Oh, God. I don't ever want to channel that again. <laughs> Too much of a showman. It's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And what does Eridif think of Metatron? What does Eridif think of Metatron? Doesn't like Metatron. Why? Why? Um, almost like too much of a light source. Yeah. No, no balance there. No yin and yang, all light. Interesting. So what's interesting about that is that Eridif was able to ascend and maintain a balance. Hmm. That's true. Because you would think that as he ascended, that he would detach from any darkness. Can you ask him how that works? What was the question? 
if if ascending makes you detach from darkness. Yes, but because Eredith was born from darkness, uh, he will never fully detach. And can you ask him what form he's in right now? Is he non-physical or is he in a higher dimension? Yes, non-physical. Are you in a higher dimension? No. It's the consciousness that has ascended. And does he have any intention of reincarnating? Do you have any intention of reincarnating? Yes. And does, does, does he plan on reincarnating into another alien civilization or would he do it on Earth? Alien. And has he ever incarnated as something as a, like a simple life form, like a tree? No. But would he do that? Would you do that? Yes, if I was given the opportunity. So Seth, in Seth Speaks, I think we're going to have to do another Seth Speaks video since your video isn't really on your channel. I can send you that video again if you'd like. But Seth says that non-physical reality, I guess you could say, is a little bit boring and there or it's i don't know i don't know if it's boring but like you have access to everything and you know at your at your hands so for fun they like to reincarnate as like trees for a couple hundred years or someone's dog just to have like a very simple life can you can you ask him if eridif has ever done that simple life form no is he too smart they don't have those options. So he doesn't have the option as to what he incarnates as? No. Do we have the option as to what we are to reincarnate as? No. Not once you're human. Hmm. Do we have to apply to reincarnate? Yes. Do we have to uh, get approval to reincarnate? Yes. And do we apply to reincarnate as different animals? No. Once you're human, you have to follow the process of evolution. Can you pull in Seth? I know you can hold two people in a space. Can you pull Seth in like as like a three-person conversation with you in Eridif? Yes. Yes, it's like a party in here. <laughs> yeah. I got all kinds of people in here. Um, okay. So is Seth there now? Yes. Ask Seth if it's possible to incarnate as like a as a tree, even though he's already been human. Is it possible for you to reincarnate as a tree, even though you've already been human? No, he doesn't want to be a tree. Hmm. In his book, he says that that was like something that like people like him would enjoy doing, though. Is it not possible for his friends to do? Enjoy doing. They would have to apply to do that. He doesn't want to do that. And what does Seth think about Eredith? What do you think about Eredith? Evil. <laughs> what is Eredith's reaction? What is your reaction? Laughing. Just uncontrollable laughter. Hmm. What do you think about Seth? Diminished consciousness. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> God, okay. Woo! Is he like insulting him, basically? No. But as a human, compared to Eridif, an alien being, we do have a diminished level of consciousness. Yes, that's true. Yeah. 
can okay and then here's something i've always wanted to ask you can you like i don't know if you've seen it in a movie where there's like a psychic and they like basically touch the person and then they can see it can you see if they can manifest in my room right now and i can see them oh my god yeah ask them can you manifest in mr robot's room yes do you want me to send them over yeah okay they're standing right next to you. Do you <laughs> see them? Uh, I don't think so. Ask him what color of hat I'm wearing. Almost like a purpley, not a purpley. What is that? Gray black? What, uh, what do they see color the way humans see color? Do you see color the way humans see color? Not really. That's a good question. I've never thought of that before. Yeah, because our spectrum is very limited compared to theirs. So they might be seeing ultraviolet. Um, oh, because they did show like a purpley thing. That's why I said purple at first. But then they showed me like a gray black. Interesting. My hat's yeah. like yellow. Mm. That's why I'm thinking they see ultraviolet. Okay. They're but. to your left. Yeah, well, that's interesting because I'm actually looking to my left, <laughs> but how bizarre. Um, They're back with me now. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I really wish I could explain. That's weird, that. isn't it? Well, you know, I've done that before. When people come through for a reading and they say, oh, you know, I'm a medium, I'm this, I'm that. And, and so what I do is I'll send, I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's test your abilities, right? Uh -huh. Not that I disbelieve them. I just want to see how strong they are. And so I will send somebody over to them and I'm like, okay, describe them. Most of the time they can't. Only one person actually described who I sent over which was, uh, I don't want to say, because if anybody's listening, this the person I always use. But anyway, they actually somewhat described that person. So you would start off by like, is the energy male or female? Uh, mm -hmm. Do they seem tall? Do they seem short? Do they seem thin? Do they seem large? You, that's how you would start out. Um, so I have done that before, but only one person actually reported the correct feedback. And all the times I've done that in a reading. That's awesome. Because, because if you're a medium, right, you're going to pick that up. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you picked up the energy to the left of you, though. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's uh, something that you don't really, it's almost like when you think you're, being watched and then you look across the room and you see someone mm -hmm. looking at you and you caught them, you know, mm -hmm. but in my room, you know, I don't have the third eye open or whatever. And I, I don't see anything, but mm -hmm. I no, I understand. Something looking at you. <laughs> yeah. They were standing to your left, right next to one another and probably about a foot away from you. Interesting. Ask them what they thought about, uh, that experience. What did you think about that experience? It was silly. It's funny. That's awesome. Ask them why I couldn't see them. Why couldn't or, Mr. Robot see you? Because you're not a medium. And can I be attuned by a medium to see like a medium? Ooh, can you be attuned? Can he be attuned like a, uh, by a medium to see like a medium? No. Wow, that was a good question. Well, I asked because I do Reiki energy and I, I couldn't do it before I was attuned. You know, I, it takes a Reiki person to attune you. It's like you're like a tuning fork. So I kind of assumed I might be able to have something like that happen just now, but you know, mm -hmm. obviously not, but mm. can you well, ask you him? Know, I have to tell you with the CTT, um, a man went to George Deusman, the creator of CTT, and did 30 rapid fire sessions, I think one per day or even maybe two per day. 
And George always reports that he was remote viewing better than anybody on the planet. Mm -hmm. But yes, that is true. However, I think you have to have some abilities there in the first place. Yeah. Um, and on that note, can you ask Seth what he thinks about CTT? What do you think about CTT? It's dangerous. <laughs> it can traumatize people if you don't do it correctly. I, I've always known that. Yeah, because if you don't word it right. Well, some of the experiences are awful. Like, for example, today I did one where a woman was uh, thrown on a fire. And, and what is so interesting is that as a female, and we've had many past lives as both, you know, either male or female. And I'm yeah. sorry to the gender crowd. OK, I'm just reporting it as I find it. I don't go back into past lives, or at least I haven't found yet where somebody had been trans in all those hundreds of years ago. I, as soon as I find that, I will obviously report it. Right. Um, but the female plight is real. And you go back, and in fact, she asked me today to go back into caveman times and it was real then too. Women were raped, women were beaten. And this continued on all the way. Obviously, it even continues on to now. Now, I'm not saying that men are not beaten and men are not raped. I can firmly attest to the fact that working for the police, I have taken many phone calls where men have been victims of rape by other men. Okay. Um, where in fact, I'll never forget this one incident where it was an American tourist in London who uh, was walking home from a club or walking back to the hotel from the club right in the middle of central London. And he was abducted by a car full of men and he was gang raped by all of them. So I'm not saying that men are not raped because of course they are. But certainly as I'm looking in these lifetimes of women, uh, when I'm, you know, we, we uncover lifetimes where there's a female, a lot of times the, the hardship is, is really unreal. It's, it's, it's hard to, to take. So if you're particularly sensitive to certain types of issues, you know, the CTT can be dangerous. Right. Um, and men as well, men as well, men have different scenarios though. I find with men, they're more like brutes and they're fighters and they're in wars and, you know, they're in battles and they're in tribes. And so it's more, especially when you're going back all those years, you find that men are the fighters, but the, uh, women were treated quite badly. Um, certainly several hundred years ago, they were just uh, treated as property. And can you ask him on that note, uh, or at least Eridif, can you ask Eridif if on an alien planet, if gender exists? Does gender exist on an alien planet? No, that's a great question. And is reproduction through um, more like scientific means? Is reproduction more like through scientific means? Yes. Interesting. And it's almost like a 3D printer. Yeah. Have you heard that before? No, but I can, I mean, I can imagine it. It's, you know, very advanced. They look alike. Oh, okay. Yeah. And can you ask him on that note when these beings are manufactured in this way, are, are they given a soul? They don't have souls, really. They have something else. We should do another video on that, on what actually they are. Yeah. I think cool. that would be cool. Do you want to stop this one here and then that be our next video? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome.
you are just incredible. I know everybody really enjoys your questioning. Uh, so we just thank you so much. And of course, if you want to find me, Liz Cross, Psychic Medium, you can find me at PsychicLizCross.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to interact with Mr. Shakespeare, uh, Max, the occasional host, or Mr. Robot, you will need to join my Patreon, which is Patreon forward slash remote viewing and beyond. You should come join us. We have a really nice positive group and they pick up the suggestions for the videos in the Discord and on the Patreon. So thank you very much for listening. Awesome.